And now, the Gulf Oil Companies and your neighborhood good Gulf dealer present Counter Spy. Washington, calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington, calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Gulf Oil Companies and your neighborhood good Gulf dealer are proud to present Counter Spy, a program especially designed to help investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. This is David Harding. Last November, Congress passed the Boggs Act, an amendment to the federal narcotics law providing for stiff, mandatory sentences for offenders. To implement this act, a special squad of 400 agents was carefully trained and assigned to narcotics duty. A series of nationwide mass arrests followed. The specific case you're about to hear has been selected from among hundreds because of its unusual nature. In the late afternoon of January 3rd this year, a young woman, worry stamped heavily on her face, walked across the dingy lobby of a cheap hotel in Washington's Skid Row section. No rooms, girlie. All taken. I don't want a room. I'm looking for someone who registered here. His name is Frank Stewart. Hey, girlie. Never heard of him. I know he's here. What room is he in? Now, look, girlie, I told Will you... Will this I... help? Help? Why didn't you tell me that? What room? 2A, just up those stairs there. First flight, last room to the right. <sighs> Frank! Frank! I know you're in there. Please let me in. Go away. It's Elaine. Let me in, Frank. No, no, I don't want to see you. Open this door. I've got to talk to you. It's no use. Go away, please. Frank, I'm staying right here until you let me in. Why'd you have to come here? for you for two days, worried half out of my mind. But why'd you have to come? Why'd you have to see me like this? It would have been better if you'd never found me. Sit down here on the bed. I want to talk to you. Oh, leave me alone. Just leave me alone, will you? Please sit down. Let me go. Oh, can't you understand, Frank? I only want to help you. Can't you understand I'm beyond help? Can't you see her? You're blind. Go on, get out. Let me alone. Frank. Frank, I'm so sick. You're going to get better now. No. No, it's hopeless. I'll get help. Oh, it's too late. Three months ago, maybe even two. But not now. I've already spoken to a doctor. He said you can't... And you only hurt yourself doing that. It must look fine, a woman with the kind of job you have. With a brother like me. You only shamed yourself. There's nothing to be ashamed of, Frank. Any more than any other illness. Now, come on. I'm going to take you home. I can't. The doctor will tell us what to do. I'll take care of you. Don't you see, Frank? Everybody will want to help you. But I don't want to help myself. You will. Don't you think I tried? It didn't work. It's no use. Frank, you're going to get well. You're going back and live a normal, healthy life. You're going to get well. You understand that? What I've put you through, Elaine. Oh, that's all past. I'm going to be proud of you, Frank. Very proud. Now, you get dressed and washed. But, Do but... as I say. I'm going down to get you a container of coffee. I'll be back in a few minutes. Now, you be ready. I'll be ready. It 
couldn't. There wasn't any other way to stop. Harding speaking. Mr. Harding, I asked to be put through directly to you. This is Agent Elaine Stewart. Yes, Mr. Stewart. What is it? I must see you right away. May I come to your office? Why, of course, but what's this about? Murder. What? One just committed. And if I don't see you right away, I'm afraid another one will be committed. This time by me. It's no different, Mr. Harding. It's the same as, as if my brother Frank was murdered. A little more water, Miss Stewart? No, Mr. Peters. I'm all right now, thanks. Sorry, I've made such a fool of myself, Mr. Harding. Oh, you didn't at all. I don't know what I would have done if you didn't see me right away. It's peculiar, isn't it? As an agent, I've worked on many cases. All kinds. But when you're personally involved, things are kind of different. Well, I've known you long enough, Miss Stewart, to know you do nothing wrong, no matter what. A cigarette, Miss Stewart? I would like one, yes. Thank you. You'd never know it, but I'm supposed to be the unemotional one in the family. Now look, you've been under a terrific strain. I think you're doing just fine. Miss Stewart, is there, uh, is there anything else you could tell us about this? I don't know. I may have forgotten something. When did you first discover that your brother had become addicted? For sure. Only a few weeks ago. You didn't notice any symptoms before that? Well, I knew something was wrong, but I just thought he was tired, nervous, maybe overworked. Uh. Mr. Harding, I'd give anything to get the people responsible for Frank's death. You didn't live with your brother, huh? No, we had separate apartments. You knew his friends? All of them, I think, with one exception. Who's that? A, a man who came to Frank's apartment once while I was there. My brother got rid of him very hurriedly. It could be the peddler, Chief. Yes, it could be. Do you remember what this man looked like? Short, thin, cheaply dressed. Oh, and one other thing. Yeah? He had a twitch in his right eye. I see. Fergus, this is Harding. Agent Stewart will be down there to identification in a few moments. Have the narcotics file ready for her to go through. All right, Fergus, thank you. Look, if you want, Miss Stewart, you can rest here a while and then go down to Ida. No, I'd rather go right away. Fine. Well, Peters and I should be back in about an hour. And while you're going through the photo file, we'll see what we can dig up in your brother's apartment. <laughs> in this chest of drawers, Chief? Uh-uh. Come on, Peters. Let's take the clothes closet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see what's in the box up here in the shelf. You go through that suit, then. Right. What's in the box, Chief? Well, dropper, syringe, empty bottle, small burner. Many was a main liner. Yeah. Gone as far as he could, I suppose. Anything in that suit? Nothing. One suit left. Sold himself out completely. In all ways. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm? His hat. Anything in it? Yeah. Here, paste it inside the band. Phone number. Equator 2, 6843. Peddler's number, you think? Well, it must be if you went through the trouble of hiding it. I'll run it down. Do that right away. And meet me back at the office. This is his photograph, Mr. Harding. Are you sure, Miss Stewart? Yes. This is the man I saw visit Frank's apartment. You have a look at him, Peters, again, will you? Now, there's no doubt about it, Chief. That's the guy. 
After I checked on that phone number, I went to the address. I saw him go in. What name's he using? Arthur Dodge. What have we got on him? Real name's Arthur Dayton, known also as Blinky Dayton. Any record? Four arrests on narcotics charges. Two convictions. Work the east here, hmm? No, no, the west coast. Last known whereabouts, Del Rey, California. Got too hot for him out there, I guess. Yeah. Well, we're going to make it even hotter here for Mr. Blinky Dayton. <laughs> Say, on these cold winter mornings, have you noticed the peace and quiet broken by sounds like this? Bucking and sputtering like that is a pretty unpleasant way to start off the day, and unnecessary, too. You see, there's a gasoline that's made to give you quick starts and fast warm-up, even on the coldest mornings. That gas is Gulf Nonox. Gulf Nonox gets your car going quickly and keeps it going without the stalling you get with so many other gasolines. It gives you full power at all times for fast pickup, smooth, safe passing. And you can count on Gulf Nonox to live up to its name. Yes, Nonox gives you quiet power without annoying engine knocks and pings. So drive in at your good Gulf dealers tomorrow. Switch to Gulf Nonox for quick starts, fast warm-up, and full quiet power. Gulf Nonox, the gas that makes driving a pleasure. Now back to Counter Spy. Yeah, what is it? This is the man, Miss Stewart? Yes, he's the one, Mr. Harding. Harding? Will you wait down in the car, please, Mr. Yes, sir. Hey, what is this? We'll give you just one guess, Dayton. That ain't my name. You got the wrong party. Don't you wish it, Blinky. What do you want with me? What was that dame fingering me for? We'll talk about that inside. What do you want with me, anyway? We'd like to book you for murder. Murder? Yes. We'd like to, but we can't. Look, what do you got against me? Officially, peddling narcotics. Unofficially, the death of Frank Stewart. Stewart? An ex-customer of yours. Never heard of him. Look, you got me all wrong. I ain't peddling this stuff anymore. Gave it up, hmm? That's right. You expect us to believe that? You can, I swear. We don't believe you. You got the stuff here in the room? I told you, I'm out of the business. Where's it hidden? The mattress? Under the floor? Or where? I told you, I'm where out of the business. Where's the stuff? I don't know what you're talking about. I'll rip open the mattress. All right, Peter. That's as good a place as any to start. Wait. The mattress turned out to be the best place to start, Chief. Where'd you buy it, Dayton? What difference does it make? A lot. Now answer, Mr. Harding, where? I don't remember. We may have a way of curing your memory. I don't remember. You ever hear of the Boggs Act, Dayton? I don't remember where I bought it. The Act makes it tough on characters like you. The penalties for illegal sale of narcotics under the Act are increased to two to five years for a first offender only. And you, Dayton, already have two counts against you. For a second offender, five to ten years. Third offender gets hit even harder, ten to twenty. Ten to twenty. Think about that, Dayton. Think hard. Ten to twenty for you. Ten to twenty. Sort of makes the peddling business real risky, doesn't it? Twenty years. Who did you buy it from, Dayton? Do I get any kind of break if I tell? I'm not promising you anything. Figure it out, Dayton. Can you be worse off if you tell? Well, Dayton? Okay, all right. We're listening. I got to stop over in Maryland. Where in Maryland? Glenton. Where in Glenton? Bowling Alley. Crystal Bowling Alley is the name of the place. I make a trip over there every month to pick up. Pick up from whom? Guy. What guy? Come on, Dick. I don't know his name. That's so? Dealing with him for how long? About six months. About six months and you don't even know his name, hmm? Never formally introduced, is that it? I'm not kidding. That's the way the operation was worked. He knows the peddlers, but the peddlers don't know him. What do you think, Chief? Well, it's possible. The truth, huh? I'll tell you the whole layout, and then you can check. You'll find out I'm not giving you the business. You don't have to worry, Dayton. We'll find out. Come on. So 
Well, you see, Miss Stewart, our next job is to find out who the seller is. You didn't get his name from Blinky Dayton? No, he said he didn't know it. Believe him? Well, I'm inclined to. Many times sellers play it that cozy. But you know where the seller can be located. Or if Dayton told us the truth, yes. Bowling alley over in Glenton. Uh That's where he made his purchase once a month. On the third Monday. I wish I could see this thing through. Well, you're going to. I'm going to put you on the case. Oh, good. But first, you've got just ten days for a rapid training course in narcotics duty. All right. And then what are your plans after that? Well, on the appointed day, Miss Stewart, you will visit that bowling alley as Blinky Dayton's girlfriend. Ginger ale. One ginger. Okay. Not many bowling tonight, huh? Who well, fills up late here, 11, 12 o'clock, the joint's jumping. Here's your ginger. Straight. <laughs> Don't be fresh. Just being friendly. Well, just mop your bar and mind your own business. Okay, girly, if that's the way you want it. That's the way. Pardon me for breathing. What's yours, mister? Beer. Beer. Coming right up. I didn't expect you here, Mr. Peters. The chief wanted me to check, Miss Stewart, to be sure you're all set. I'm all right. You let it be known around yet that you're Blinky's girlfriend? Yes, sir. Watch it. One beer. How much? Fifteen. Keep the change. Thanks. Know your stuff, Miss Stewart? Yes, everything. Blinky Dayton's record? And... Back to his first arrest. The narcotic stones? Down to the last powder. You got the number to call? Uh-huh. If it gets rough, use it. I will. You'll be covered by agents anyway, just in case. I hope I won't need them. You never can tell. You scared? Pretty much. Remember what the chief said. You can back out any time you want. After what happened to my brother, what kind of a person do you think I am? Me? I think you're swell. in a row. I said nice bowling. So I heard you. Oh, another strike. Regular champ, huh? You're in my way. Oh, unfriendly type, huh? Not to friends. Well, maybe I'm not such a stranger. What's your name? Why? Maybe we got a mutual friend. Yeah. Who would that be? That would be Blinky Dayton. I've been waiting for you. Took my time looking you over. What's your name? Helene Stewart. Blinky calls me Ellie. What do I care what he calls you? I only care why you're here. I'm making a pickup for Blinky. What pickup? You know. Maybe I don't. Why didn't Blinky come himself? Sick. Sick from what? Same thing that always troubles him. His ulcers. <laughs> ulcers, huh? Oh, you know he complains about it to everybody. So he's sick again, huh? Don't believe me? Call him. You got his number. He'll be there to get my call? He's sick in bed. Where else would he be? Okay, I'll call him. He'll be there. Take it from me. He better be. <laughs> Pride HD, the new motor oil that cuts engine wear as much as 80% in the day-to-day short-trip driving that most of us do. Short-trip driving, taking the children to school, running errands to the store. That's the kind of driving most of us do. And it's the kind responsible for most engine wear. 
You see, short-trip driving can dirty up engine parts more than any other kind of driving. But now there's a new motor oil that keeps engines clean under all driving conditions. It's Gulf Pride HD, the new high-detergency motor oil from Gulf. Gulf Pride HD reduces harmful sludge to a degree never before thought possible, keeps pistons and piston rings amazingly clean. And since a clean engine wears less... Gulf Pride HD cuts engine wear way down, as much as 80% in day-to-day short-trip driving. This extra protection can save you money by heading off motor troubles and avoiding repair bills. So don't wait another day to start using Gulf Pride HD in your car. Drive in tomorrow at your neighborhood good Gulf dealers. Change to high-detergency Gulf Pride. New Gulf Pride HD. <laughs> Now back to Counter Spy. Hello? Helene Stewart, Mr. Harding. Hello. I'm in a drugstore phone booth down the street from the bowling alley. Yes, I know. Agent Conway's in a car just down the block. He radioed the information to me. Did you make out all right? Yes, your plan worked to the letter. He said he called Blinky, and Blinky told him he was sick. Yes, we saw to that, too. I haven't been able to get our contact's name yet. Well, Peter spotted him talking to you in the bowling alley, and he recognized him as Charlie Vincent. We have a mile-long record on him. Now, what's your next step? I'm to meet him in an hour. Where? The basement of an apartment house, 22 Elm Street, the boiler room. He'll turn the stuff over to you then? Said he would. All right. That brings us up close to the finish. <laughs> Come in. You, uh, you got the money? Uh Uh-huh. You got the stuff? (laughs) You know, I like doing business with you. Better than with ugly Blinky, huh? Uh, Blinky's expecting me back in Washington tonight. Huh? What's your hurry? Well, next time I won't be in such a hurry. Then I can look forward to a return visit, huh? Mm-hmm. You'll see me again. I'm sure. Had a promise? It is. Now, how about the stuff? Got them right here. Two capsules of each. Take them. Suppose we uh, take them, Vincent. It's only one exit from this boiler room, Vincent. Come on, if you want to try a break. Cops. You can wait outside, Miss Stewart. All right, Mr. Harding. She's with you. At least one of us. Get those capsule feeders. That's all the evidence we'll need to wrap him up. You're not going to give any... Hey, quick, Peter. Hey, come on, you cough him up. Too late, Chief. He's swallowed it. (laughs) That's right, Chief. Too late. (laughs) Now what are you going to do, huh, Chief? We have ways, friend. (laughs) Who are you trying to kid, friend? I read the papers. Supreme Court threw out a case last month because the cops got their evidence that way. (laughs) The Supreme Court is on my side. Could I ask for anything better? You might be asking for a lot more before we're finished with you. (laughs) Who are you trying to scare? I know my constitutional rights. What can you do? We can hold you for 24 hours. So hold me. So what? You take it from me, Vincent. They could turn out to be the worst hours of your life. Let's go. I can see it. Inside. Here he is, Mr. Harding. All right, Peter. Now you can ask Dr. Wheeler to step in. Hey, listen, you, uh, what's this all doctor? about? Huh? Doctor, this is the man. Vincent, this is Dr. Wheeler of the Narcotics Division. Who needs a doctor? I never felt better. Vincent, you've been held here for six hours so far. Who's complaining? I can wait the rest easy. Now, before Dr. Wheeler speaks with you, I want you to realize that he's under oath as a medical man to tell you only the absolute truth. Truth about what? Doctor? 
You swallowed two capsules of heroin. Is that correct, Vincent? So? Now, I presume the capsule covering is composed of gelatin. So? The digestive juices are potent enough to dissolve even the strongest gelatins within 12 to 18 hours. Hey, what's he getting at? Your funeral, Vincent, maybe. What? Please go on, Doctor. Two capsules of heroin, even if the narcotic is only of 25% strength, are enough to kill a dozen men. What? A dozen. Not just one, Vincent. Now, I can safely say that if the capsules remain in your system, in a very short time they'll prove fatal. He means you'll be dead, Vincent. Dead? I repeat, if the capsules remain in your system... In a very short time, they'll prove fatal. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome, Mr. Harding. Well, Doc, wait. What is it, Vincent? Well, you... You can't let me die. It's not up to us. Doc, you can't let me die. Now, you've got to save me. He has to have your permission, Vincent. That's the law, Vincent. You're a stickler for the law. must have your permission. Well, he's got it. He's got it for the love... He's got to help me. Well, the doctor is quite willing to cooperate. And he's ready to go to work. And okay, let him do it. We're wasting time. The doctor will work on you right after we get from you names and locations. Names? Of everyone you sell to and the people you buy from. What's the matter with you? We can't waste time. You're the one who's wasting time, Vincent. It's up to you. All right, all right. I'll tell you everything you want to know, but let's get it over with fast. Right, start the recorder, Peter. Right. All right, Vincent, go ahead. Into this microphone. Start talking. <laughs> Got it all, Mr. Harding? Everything, Miss Stewart. Agents are now rounding up the people involved with Vincent. Well, I, I guess you don't need me on this assignment anymore. No, but I just stopped by to thank you. It's all in the line of duty. Well, a bit above and beyond. You know how I wanted to help, Chief. Yes, I know. Of course, it doesn't bring your brother back. Well, if what I've done has helped others like Frank, then that's something. Well, it's a great deal more. Although they'll never know who you are or what you've done, I assure you, Miss Stewart, many people are very much in debt to you. Just about half the cars on the road today have one or more burned-out auto bulbs. That can mean real danger. But you can be sure your lights are working, even those you don't ordinarily see from the driver's seat, if you let your good golf dealer check every light on your car and replace any that may be burned out. This auto bulb check is a service your good golf dealer will be glad to perform. So drive in tomorrow. And for the life of your car, go golf. Tune in next week, same time, same station, to another exciting counter-spy report to the American people. Next week, case of the captain on the spot. In the relentless fight against the underworld combination which rules the criminal elements of this country, there are many methods of attack used by your law enforcement officers. One of the most successful is chipping away at the syndicate structure in as many different places as possible. Be sure to tune in next week for the never-before-revealed facts in case of the captain on the spot on Counterspy. Tonight's Counterspy program was directed by Marx B. Loeb and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with the Oscar Bradley Orchestra. Bill Rogers speaking. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lloyd production for the Gulf Oil Companies and your neighborhood good Gulf dealer. <laughs> Be sure to see We the People on NBC television every Friday night. Consult your newspaper for time and station. <laughs>